ooh, baby, it's not cold outside yet, but it's getting there. <laughs> we got to keep our babies nice and warm, keep them going good. Today, we're going to be talking about frost protection. It's a sad day, but somebody's got to do it on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening and give the information out for you to be successful in your garden, whether it's your first or your last. We are your hosts, Ben, the backyard gardener, and Batavia, the front yard gardener. One in the country. One in the city. Now get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening, as we learn to grow and grow for change. It's depressing, Batavia. It's so depressing that it is going to be frosting soon. Listen, Listen, I have a cup of tea to prepare us for today's topic. One in the mug says, be happy. So I am powering my way through this with all kinds of signs and post-its and daily affirmations. I'm going to make it. I'm determined. You good? Yeah. We're going to help other people make it through too. I guess. We'll see. <clears throat> I don't think there's any way to get over it. You know, actually, I take that back. The first frost doesn't kill me. It's like the 50th frost that kills me. <laughs> <laughs> and you, know, you don't even get, you live in the tundra, so I don't even know. You know, actually, this is the change, right? Where we are right now in September. This will come out right at the top of October. It's the, uh, my seven day forecast calls for like lows of 50s. Already? Highs of 60s already. already. Man, we're in lows of like 78. Yeah. So but. remember I told you I had a good girlfriend and her kids, she has twins and their birthday is like, I think it's like next week. So it's like mid September and every September she talks about how it's kind of chilly and rainy. And so I always remember that when you try to figure out like how warm or cold is September. So I use her kid's birthday as the gauge. Break out the sweater, yeah. the garden sweater. No, not that cold. No. But. <clears throat> we won't be put on the sweater for a while, but it's mm. still, it, you know, we just had our first taste of fall and it's, you know, and when I say fall, I mean, it was like a high of like 85, but <laughs> okay. that's fall for us. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, it's coming. It's starting to come. So it'll go like, you know, lower 80s. We'll be 90 a couple times and we'll be 70s and 80s. And, you know, it'll it'll bounce a lot here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Did you see um, this is a bright like the second week of September that Denver had like a 60 degree temperature drop yeah. overnight, you know, from 90 degrees to like 30 degrees. And I had a moment when I saw that of like, oh, is it coming here next? You know, like, so there's two reasons why I don't live in Denver. Mm -hmm. One, there's nowhere to surf. Oh, okay. And two, you get 60 degree temp temperature drops. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's brutal. Crazy. My heart goes out to them because mm -hmm. that's like, you know, that's depressing because you're like, all right, cool. We're, we're sailing in mm -hmm. the fall and then boom. Yeah. Everything's gone. Bottom you know falls what I mean? out. Yeah. Yeah. The bottom falls out. Exactly. That's sad. So I. um. But we're still going to be happy. And just so for those that are listening it's actually B, not as in B Better Garden, but B as in B E E, happy. It's the cutest thing. I've uh, I've ventured out. I've uh, I've taken step one from my um, kind of. I, don't, I hate to use the word quarantine because it's not that, but my you know limited social interaction. And I actually went to one of those retail shops that kind of sells everything for the low, low, low price of. And you went um, to Walmart. No, 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 not that low. Oh. <laughs> I went to Marshall's um, and I went there for a specific thing, a step stool. But, you know, those stores, you just you basically put aside a couple of hours. Um, and so I always look for fun mugs when I'm there and mm -hmm. I found a really fun one. So that's that's the reason why I am focused on being happy. Fun stuff, fun stuff. So, um you know how we're always complaining, oh, it's so hot in here, da 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 I put up my first ceiling fan this weekend. Like successfully. ever? Ever? Successfully, yeah. I've put them up before, uh -huh. but unsuccessfully. Oh, okay. There's that, yeah. 
So I was finally successful. I'm not an, I'm not an, I can do a lot of things, mm-hmm. a lot of things, but I cannot do electricity. I put up, I installed is the way I'd like to describe it. A ceiling yeah. fan about 10 years ago and the amount of pressure and strain, like it, it's, it was my first and only, but I bragged about it for a long while. Damn like, right. You know, I'm yeah, because it was like HDTV, like home improvement shows. Here I come. Yeah. <laughs> One ceiling fan at a time. <laughs> yeah. Y'all better move over because I put up a ceiling fan. I can do anything I want. <laughs> or I can install all of your ceiling fans. That's it. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I can install your ceiling fans, but you better get the bleep button ready because there's going to be a lot of cussing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you just did it. How hard it is. To, like, it's, I mean, the idea of those heavy pieces and trying to get them. Well, anyway. Yeah. Congratulations. So, yeah, let me tell you what happened, though. So I'm putting it... So it's one light switch turns on the fan, one light switch turns on the light, right? Mm-hmm. Fancy. Mm-hmm. But there was only a light there before. Oh. So I go to take it apart, and there's all these wires. And it was copper, which I know where the copper goes, white. I know where the white goes, white and red. Mm-hmm. And then the ceiling fan has white, black, green, blue, and copper. So I'm like, oh, okay, we got extra wires oh, and no. extra colors. Are you sure you're supposed to use all of them, though? Maybe they were just extras. See, that's your problem. <laughs> that's your first problem. So I start hooking it all up, and I'm like, man, I, I, I put it on, nothing. I'm like, all right, cool. The son of a bitch that built my house painted the wires white. So... <laughs> I had to go up there and like scrape off the paint. I'm like, oh, Classic. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyways, I got that done. So it's about so. 10 degrees, 15 degrees cooler in your space now? It is. Mm-hmm. It is. So, uh, no, because I don't have it on super high because I don't want to mess up the sound for mm-hmm. everybody. Mm-hmm. The last thing they want to hear is, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't hear that now. So I think we're okay. Yeah, hopefully. So, frost protection. You're mm-hmm. racing down the road straight to winter time right now. It's a downhill spiral for you. What are you going to do? I think I just got sad. Yeah, I think, did you like, just try to ju- jump out a window? It just flipped <laughs> for me. Like, <laughs> man. Well, you want to protect whatever plant babies you have that are still in the garden. Yeah. So, that's my intention and my goal. Like, dude, this is so hard because um, I was sharing some of um, tomatoes, my tomato harvest. You know, I'm like, you know, you know the story here. Getting, you know, grocery stores worth of tomatoes. And um, I'm trying to think of where she is. Um, Another gardener commented and saying that's crazy that she's basically pulling her tomato plants out now. And that she had got her first tomatoes like in May. And I'm just like, my tomato plants didn't even go into the ground until June, right? And notoriously, and this is how you make, you know, lemonade out of lemons. Notoriously, since I start late, which means I get my first red tomatoes late. My first whole tomatoes didn't come until August. I have always, even with when I had just one or two plants, pull green tomatoes off the vine Right. You know, when that frost is about to come. So yeah. I have, you know, a basement and or a kitchen and or under my dining room table box full of green tomatoes around, you know, that frost time. So to sit here now in September and to think that that's next month and to look at all of the fruit that are on my plants, like I need to talk this through to be able to get over the hurdle because those I'm not going to save my tomato plants. There's no I'm not going to go through frost protection for those. Um, but okay. well, it doesn't right. make sense for you because once you get a frost, you probably get frost, 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 frost. Mm-hmm. You know, you mm-hmm. don't bounce like, you know, for me, I might get a frost in the next day to be 65. Yeah, not here. So yeah. like a, a frost protection a for a tomato plant works mm-hmm. now. I did um, come across something not too long ago in my research for this wonderful show that we're listening to that everybody should tell their friends about, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and insist that they you, tell their friends. Yeah. Just so you know those things that are um, those antiquated things from way back in the day that um, the newspapers. Oh, wait. I think I've heard of these. Yeah. You've heard of those. Yeah. They're, they're okay. these weird the thin papers. Days, yeah. yeah. They have mm-hmm. words written on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you get those and you um, you wrap your green tomatoes individually in newspaper, mm-hmm. they will ripen. And some people are getting enough and they're eating fresh tomatoes up until January. 
Oh. Because they when they off gas, it helps keep that gas in uh-huh. the, to ripen them. And then essentially, the way I look at it is you're basically getting a grocery store style of a t- tomato. You know what I mean? So, like wait, 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 hold the, on. They, okay. yes, they add the newspaper, this thing you refer to as a newspaper. They yes. add that, they wrap their tomatoes in that to slow down the ripening or speed up the ripening? To speed it. Okay. To allow it to ripen before it rots. Because you know that oh, when, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. when fruit... Um, ripens it off gases. I don't know the name of the gas off the top of my head, Eth- but ethylene, a gas will come. Eth- yeah, uh-huh. something like that. And so the the newspaper will keep it in to help it. So yeah, that's so an option for you. I um, December first is a very special day. Um, it's a day that they've told me I was born on, and we don't. But you weren't born. Well, we know yeah. that you weren't born. You came out of the ground out of a seed. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I emerged like a bean that sprouts. You know, I'm just nostalgic about everything. Like this completely made up story that I just heard for the first time just has me a little teary eyed. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. All right. So when I emerged <laughs> from the dirt <laughs> on December first, <laughs> um, I, that marks um. A, other than it being my birthday, it marks the time that like the last time I had fresh tomatoes last year. So we got the frost right on schedule. It's eight, nine. So our frost is expected on October the 29th. I have to, to straighten out my first frost, last frost and first frost dates. I have to go eight, which means it's April the 18th. And then nine, which means it's October the 29th. This is how my mind works. Letting you in on the secret. So I was able to pull off um, a bunch of tomatoes last year and I'm looking at the actuals. So it was scheduled to be um, the 29th is what we went over. And then it was actually a date I don't have written down. I don't know, 20 something. That was kind of anticlimactic. I was expecting to give you like actual facts. Um, Yeah, that was really anticlimactic, but thank you. So thank you for your in contribution. October there was a frost date and I pulled my tomatoes off and I was eating. I didn't lose many, you know, so I didn't have many that rotted while I was inside. I had yeah. tomatoes that um that ripened all the way up until December first. I think I kept them in my um this is actually two years in a row because last year, the year before that, I was having some work done in the kitchen. And I remember walking down into the laundry room to get the tomatoes uh, for the salad that I was going to make like on my, you know, bedroom nightstand because my entire first floor was completely <laughs> demolished. But anywho, I said that to say that's a whole month later that I was yeah. still eating fresh tomatoes. I feel like. I may want to accept that challenge in January. Like that is, that's like Do rock it. star garden status. That's the whole idea of gardening though, man, is you got to make it last, especially mm-hmm. in your area, in your zone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When you live in the Antarctic, you got to make it last. <laughs> you know, you yeah. got to make it stretch. And we've talked about, and there are a billion ways to um, preserve tomatoes, but a fresh tomato is like, that's my ideal you know forget the sauce forget the stewed forget all of that like if i can have a fresh tomato from the garden i'm a happy gal that's funny you say that because uh the other day my wife was going to cut up one of the tomatoes you know we had the septoria leaf spot debacle Mm -hmm. which by the way i have four green tomatoes so it looks like i'm on track to get more all right all right but um you know it was it's not an ideal situation but anyways i was like you know hey we're we're running low on tomatoes you know i want to get a couple more cans she goes damn it you don't have to can everything you know you can eat it fresh and i was like okay i'm sorry i was like i don't really like fresh tomatoes that much she's like well i do and these are my tomatoes you don't get anything else what you grow is for me and she started waving her head around talking to me and i was like all right i'm in 
deep doo doo uh, right now. You walked right into it, but who knew, right? Oh, I jumped into <laughs> Actually, it. Actually, I knew because we've talked about how she likes um, how you're really growing tomatoes outside of what you're canned for her because you don't like them fresh. So yeah, it I feels don't... like you're just being completely greedy when it comes to the tomato harvest. You know what though? She won't be saying that when come the winter time when we go to cook some soup and mm-hmm. she don't have to go to the store and get mm-hmm. a can of tomatoes. That's all I'm saying. That's situational though. We're here. No. We're, we're in the present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but i did pull up all of my in preparation for uh fall i pulled up all of my better boys oh okay yeah they're a pain in my ass yeah, yeah. i damn um, things it was ridiculous how big they got and mm-hmm. like dude it looked like the it, i mean my my tomato had scoliosis <laughs> yeah, yeah you yeah. know i had yeah. to like fold it over yeah. and it was drooping i was like this is insane like i always grow romas mm-hmm now I know why. Mm-hmm. I have to be very selective next time about uh, what I grow because yeah. I was like, this is ridiculous. It just was overshading, you know, garden experiment fail. I didn't get a whole lot out of them. They were cracking, you know. Yeah. And I know why they crack and it is my fault ultimately, but like the aromas didn't crack. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, you know? that's actually um, depending on the variety, you know, you know, we talk about disease resistant. That's a thing like, you know, um, prone for cracking versus not. I want to go back a sec, though, when it comes to frost protection and tomato plants. So this spring, you know, when people were buying toilet paper and I was out buying garden dirt, um, they had um, and some of the big box stores like your Home Depots, they had transplants out already and we yeah. were going to get a late frost. So we were past our last frost date here in Chicago in zone 6a but another frost was expected and so you know you know how i have i personally have that moment of to say or not to say so i decided to say and i should have known better because it was an older gentleman and i won't say that you know older people don't just pick up gardening but i will say that every older person that i've talked to about gardening has gardened like for a lifetime right yeah so i should have known he knew yeah but he was buying transplants and i just the you know how I'm afraid for other gardeners. The idea of you purchasing this transplant, these starter plants or whatever, putting them in the ground and then like that freeze killing them. These are tomato plants. Like that's just detrimental. It hurts my heart. So anyway, I had mentioned, oh, did you notice that? Did you see the weather? We're expecting, you know, freezing temps. And so he's like, oh, okay, yeah, I hadn't seen it, but you know, I'll just cover them. Frost protection, right? Um, so those little bitty things were... What's that about six inches tall at best? Mm-hmm. It's a lot easier to cover that versus even if I could in my area or if it made sense in my area, my tomato plants are like some of them are seven or eight feet tall. It's craziness. You know, so just even the mechanics of trying to uh, protect them against the frost using some type of covering, it's just not realistic for me. So for those listening, you know, it depends on where you are. Like Ben said, how long you, you know, you're expecting to have that frost, but also the size of the plant, if it even makes sense to give it a try. Look look who showed up with the segue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look who showed up with the segue. It is the T. Impressive. I'm telling you. And I I think I may be trying to transition off of afternoon coffee, although this does have caffeine in it. But I didn't add any sugar or cream. So I'm not committing to it. This is just it's trying to put it out there, maybe to be a little bit, you know, accountable or maybe not. Before I drop some shocking knowledge bombs, I've been sugar free for a month in preparation for something that's coming up soon in which I will be in another decade next time we do a podcast. That is freaking awesome. So, well, let me let me rephrase that. I have gone without sugar for one month so that when that day comes, I can eat all the sugar I want <laughs> and nobody can tell me any different because I've earned it. That's a way I had um, a brownie cheesecake topped with ice cream for breakfast. Um, and this is not your normal Batavia doesn't give a hell about what she eats like she eats whatever she wants this is actually very strategic it's because I've had the brownie in the refrigerator from my favorite local bakery for a couple of days and I've just I've just been so tired in the evenings where I've not gotten to dessert and I just decided to flip things over and say I'm gonna start eating it in the morning guaranteed to enjoy it so I am so far away from a month off of sugar so far away yeah, you don't have to do it. I do it. That's okay. I'll do it for both of us. Well, I don't have any big birthdays coming up, though. 
Yeah. Oh, did you say Every it was a birthday? Is big. As, yeah. When you're as old as you, birth, all true. birthdays are big. This is true. Really quickly, I was talking, and this is going to be obnoxious, but I'm going to say it anyway. I was talking to um, my boss this morning, and we were talking about um, being lactose intolerant, which is obviously too much information, but this is the kind of relationship we've had, we worked together for 20 plus years. Uh, but part of the conversation was how I, when I was younger, even as a young adult, thought you were young and then you were old, right? Yeah. So like everyone was young until you got to, you know, be old. I won't say what I thought old was, but definitely like gray haired, retired old, right? And then when I was probably in my early to mid thirties, you know, I think the first sign was when my doctor asked me about my calcium intake. And I'm like, I gotta start monitoring that kind of crap. Like, you know, it, it just, it hit me. And then it was just like a dominoes, you know, my knees started to ache, you know, <laughs> like I started to squint a little bit. I think maybe I got my first pair of glasses around that time. And I realized that there's stages to, you know, becoming wiser, if you will. Um, yeah. So it's not all at once. Yeah, man. I don't see, know. my beard makes me look way older than I am. Oh, but it's a thing now. Maybe five years ago hey, look, it makes you look older, but now it's kind of, you to know. Be, I'm proud to have the distinguished look. Mm-hmm. That's what I call it. Salt and pepper all the way, baby. That's exactly the word I was going to use to describe it. Distinguished look. Every time I look in the mirror, I slightly sing to myself, pu, 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 push it good because it's salt and pepper <laughs> all the way. <laughs> Absolutely, man. All right. So, but all right. We're, we're talking about, so are we're talking we about just trying protection. to prolong what this discussion is really about? Are we as in me? You're going to get mad at me probably. Uh, all right. Yeah. I don't know. You might not. So... Well, first, I, I'm going to open up with a little thought provoking um, idea is, do you think that you should be trying to frost protect your summer vegetables? It's a really good question. Batavia doesn't. I think if you have veggies on, I think if you're in Denver, as a good example. And this is just a crazy drop for this one day. You may get two or three more weeks of normal weather. Absolutely do it. Um, but that's why I don't live in Denver too. So I'm going to go with yeah. no for me and yes for others. Um, well, I think, you know, outside situations, you know, like I, I agree with you. Like if all of a sudden they said, we're going to get to 32 degrees tonight, but then the next day it's going to be back in 80. Oh, I'd be out. I'd stay up all night and do anything I could, you know, because I know that I have two more months. Because, you know, body heat, you've seen all of the movies that really, you know, can help save or keep something alive. Right. So, (laughs) you know, I, I am in the school of thought that like, okay, we're not even going to talk about tomatoes anymore. You know, Mm -hmm. squash, you Mm -hmm. really like squash. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should cover squash because, you know, once they get to like below 50, they start to suffer. Yeah. So what I really want to focus on is your fall or spring vegetables, whatever they may be. Agreed. You know, Mm -hmm. you know, lettuce, kale, chard, spinach, carrots, you know, rutabaga, Mm -hmm. turnips, you know, blah, 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 blah. So that being said, what are some ways that you cover or you, you know, for frost protection, what are some ways that you do? So I, um, you know, it's covering that I use. I'm going to, this is where covering does come in and I think that you'll accept it. Um, I use really one of two covering types. So one is, um, when you were talking about that thing that people used in the olden days, I thought you were going to talk about this. Uh, so I have, <laughs> I have a couple of quilts um, that aren't really kind of in-house cuddle couch kind of worthy. They're a bit tattered. Um, so I've used that and I have like other, have you, I mean, you guys have moved a couple of times. You know how sometimes when you move, you have kind of those, that thicker material to help protect some of your furniture. So I have a, yes. one or two of those. So I'll use that um, to cover a bed. I actually did that in the spring when it came to covering my strawberry bed um, when we had that kind of late frost. Um, I don't have strawberries now, so that's neither here nor there. 
So I'd use that if the veggies are short and I don't have to worry about damaging the plant. Yes. So you have to be careful about that. Uh, in the last couple of years, I've used plastic. Um, and this is kind of the, uh, I think it's six millimeter. You hear me with the whole measure? Yeah, six millimeter, yeah. whatever that means. <laughs> the thickness That's of it. That's how thick it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, note that it's white because I did make the mistake of buying the box and got get it home and realize, wait, this is black. That's not what you want. So anyway, because you still want light to be able to uh, get to the plant. So I've gotten and used plastic before. And you and I have hinted at this. It's got to be real careful. So if you go back to that Denver situation where it's dropping down to 30, and if I were to use plastic in that scenario, you got to be careful when that temperature heats back up that next day. You know? Yeah, because so, it'll, it'll just cook it. Yeah, exactly. It'll exactly. cook it. So you don't want to just leave that covering on in my instance right. or if I was in Denver. So those so, are the two things I've used. Yeah, so... I've used uh, portable greenhouses before mm -hmm. and rigged some stuff up in there. This was when I was in Massachusetts. You know, we're in about the same zone you are in now. Now, at this exact moment, I do not cover anything. <clears throat> I don't cover anything. And it is for that last reason that mm -hmm. you said mm -hmm. is, you know, it gets cold and the next day it warms up everything gets fried. Yeah. So essentially what I'm doing is I know myself and it fluctuates so much and the garden is so inactive mm -hmm. in that time that it's easy for you to take a couple days and not even walk out there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know that like that might happen, you know, and then I come back and I'm like, damn, I did all this work and then I fried everything. Yeah. Now that being said, next year I am considering um, over the winter installing something to make rows, you know, covered rows mm -hmm, over it. Mm -hmm. Um, if I desire to do that, mm -hmm. you know, because it's easier to do it when there's nothing in the garden than when it's full. Yeah. 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 But yeah, yeah. as I have come to figure out, there is not going to be a whole lot of time when my garden is completely empty mm -hmm. and I have a long list of things to do. So what I have done in the past is, um, or let me tell you what I plan to do first. Okay. Is I plan to take PVC poles, stick them in along the edge, and then just kind of screw them in. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, by the way, the wood around my bed is rotted, so I have to replace oh, that okay. this year. Yeah. So, you know, it's a good time to do it. I can take that off and then do it. But, um, and then that way, if I need to, I can just slide something in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a big deal. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Um. I have done something with um, portable greenhouses. Are you familiar with those? Not the ones with racks in them. No, the ones that you can lay on top of a bed. I had a. I have not used them, but I had a friend send me that as a suggestion for my garden. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've I've used it. Mm -hmm. um, it sucks. Oh no! It's a good thing <laughs> well, I just looked just, at the link and kept on moving. It's just no. It, it doesn't suck. It's just. I realized when I did it that I was, it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. That style, you know, it just, it took too much. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, in Massachusetts, when it gets cold, it gets cold quick. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the real thing was like trying to keep it warm inside because it doesn't get, but so cold. Once it gets so cold, that stuff doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It'll still freeze in there. Yeah, so yeah. even you, with just a note, even with the plastic and, um, I only used plastic because I wanted to reap so that initial frost protection is one thing versus overwintering that's not we're not talking about overwintering but I want to use and try to use plastic to overwinter last year yes. and that's the reason why when it comes to kind of frost protection I basically repurpose that same plastic um yeah. but that one layer of plastic how many millimeters six six millimeters absolutely was not enough for Chicago winters to um, keep those plants, you know, even it didn't work. That wasn't enough yeah. cover. So perhaps a second layer would be effective, but um, how far into the winter though? I don't remember. Um, no, actually I do. Too bad you don't have a notebook to write it down in. That's an idea, but I mean, come on, who's writing like, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm going to say November-ish. 
So not even that far into no, your thing. We, so you're we got, only we got a lot of heavy um, snow and then like really freezing temps pretty yeah. early last year in the season, and it went it bounced back and forth. Not like again, not Denver temperatures, but um, I had some family in around mid November last year, and it was just. You know how it is. It was just, it's like when someone visits you and it's the hottest part of your season, it's going to mm-hmm. feel bad because it's like there's not a whole lot of enjoyment with this weather. So yeah, mid-November things started to to go south. And so that was only a couple of weeks in since, you know, the freezing temps had set in. So then by saying that, I mean, think about it this way. You did all that work to extend for two weeks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like big effing deal. You know what I mean? Like two weeks, that's nothing. Yeah. You know, you've... You've essentially just prolonged the inevitable. Yeah. And to clarify, to Ben's point, those were not summer veggies. Those were kind of my fall veggies I was trying to protect. Right. Um, So, yeah. So, let me, I'm going to help you out with that right now. Okay. So, what I did, and, you know, if you have the hoops over your your garden Mm -hmm. bed or whatever, you know, as long as it's not big, because remember... You, you might want it super tall, but the more space you have, the more you have to heat. So, like, you know, I'm over six feet tall. Mm-hmm. So, if I walk in, like, my whole goal in life is to walk in somewhere and never hit my head. You know? <laughs> okay, okay. But when you're talking about these things, it's, mm-hmm. it's miserable. Mm-hmm. So, what you do is don't build them so they're so tall. Like, like really think about what you're putting in there. Mm-hmm. Because if you're just growing, like, some lettuce or something, you know, lettuce is what? Maybe eight inches tall. Maybe, mm-hmm. let's say, a foot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you go 18 inches up, it takes less to heat that sure. area, mm-hmm. correct? So this is what I did in my little greenhouse deal that I had. I took five gallon buckets and I filled them up with water. Mm -hmm. And then I ran out to the five gallon bucket. I painted the five gallon bucket black, ran, put that out into the garden. And then I put aquarium heaters. I got some cheap aquarium heaters Mm -hmm. in there. And then that would keep them warm all night. So they'd radiate heat and raise that temperature in there. Mm -hmm. And it did. It def it one hundred percent raised the temperature in there, and I was growing in Massachusetts up until December. Interesting, roughly. So you so know, this is but the heaters are outside technically outside because the in, greenhouse you've created is also outside, right? Right. Well, it, I, I'm not going to call it a greenhouse. Okay. Okay. So, um, but yeah, you put the aquarium heaters in there, and if you're not familiar with how an aquarium heater is, you set them to whatever temperature you want the water. Mm-hmm. So let's say you want it at 70 degrees, you set it at 70. If it gets above 70, it cuts off, and then if not, it runs. So you know, you just keep that water mm-hmm. warmer. Mm-hmm. You know, and the more power you have for the heater, the easier it is for the warm and it will radiate that heat. Yeah. Not to mention the heat it gets during the day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the problem that I had with it is it did so well (laughs) that I actually grew more weeds than anything else. (laughs) That's an excellent point. Excellent point. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, now that I'm like sitting here talking about it. I might do another little patch because they're four by eight. Uh-huh. Maybe I'll do another little patch this year. I still have time. So maybe I'll get another one. And, you know, because my beds were four by eight at the time. So the problem that I had with it is when I put the greenhouse down on top of the bed, it never really fit. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? If my if my bed was like three foot, 10 inches by seven foot nine inches and it would slide right on and it would be a little bit better situation yeah but i never did but see now i have that wild things garden where things just grow maybe i'll try that this year but and do you see, have electricity yeah. that far out uh they make extension cords oh well, good grief you're such an ass <laughs> <laughs> okay all right yes they do um i mean it's a point yeah, so I was thinking my beds actually fit that measurement, but I bumped them right up against each other for the goal of like, so it's, you know, um, the two beds are like th- three, I think actually I did it opposite. Let's call it a three and a half wide, you know, seven feet long, but it's right next to meaning butting up against another bed with the same measurements. And I did that very intentionally. So I would be able to kind of carry whatever coverings I had straight across. Um, So there's that. So, oh, I did want to mention though, the other 
a lot of people use just your regular row covers that are designed for frost protection. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I... That's essentially what these are that we're talking about, other yeah. than the little greenhouse thing. They're essentially mm-hmm. just row covers. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the material for the row covers that are more traditional is different, right? Yeah. So you don't have to worry... You don't have to worry so much about the overheating versus with the plastic. Um, so I just... I haven't... I haven't decided whether or not I'm willing to make the investment, you know, because again, it's just one more garden expense. Um, but well, yeah, you got you to gotta look up and see like how long is it going to make a difference in your area? That's you know, like critical, for me, yeah. if I did it, I would grow all year round. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have no question in my mind that I would be growing something all year, like productive mm-hmm, growing. Mm-hmm. But for you, like, I mean, you guys get cold. Yep. You know, and there's there comes a point where there's just literally nothing you can do. I mean, you let the snow pile up on it so it will insulate it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hint number one. So, you know, that's a good that's kind of like with your compost pile. Yeah. Don't shovel it. Just let the snow build up on it and it'll, you know, insulate it. But the thing, not your though, compost because you don't compost. I was talking to my neighbor, the one that um, started restarted her gardening career. Um, and she asked me about... Um, I was turning, I was prepping some containers for the fall and she asked me what I was adding to it. I was adding some compost to it and I was walking her through um, how I will never ever, and I basically was implying you shouldn't either, (laughs) I will never ever have compost on this land and the why. And she's like, yeah, I get it. Um, But I lost my train of thought. Yeah, you sure did. I saw it go mm-hmm, out the window. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is this is the reason why I'm gonna have to go back to coffee. Like I'm 30 minutes in, I'm going back to coffee. <laughs> so, well, let's break it down then. So, one thing that you can do, like you can definitely put the the five gallon buckets with aquarium mm-hmm. heaters in your under your row covers. Mm-hmm. You can for sure do that, but you can also just put buckets of water in there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, and that's like an age old trick. I mm-hmm. feel like everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. But it, it, you, I would be remiss if I did not say that during yeah. this adventure that we're on right now yeah. is, you know, sticking containers of larger, the largest container of water you can. If you stick a bottle of water in there, it's going to freeze, mm-hmm. you know, unless it's got that weird ass chemical that some of these places have, yeah, yeah, some yeah, of these yeah. bottles have. Yeah. But, you know, that's that's definitely something like. You're you're making the first step into keeping it warmer during the night mm-hmm. when you can't go out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Another thing to note, though, is right. Another thing to note is the difference between in ground beds versus for me, garden beds that are on my patio and containers so those are three very different environments when it comes to the cold at some point once these temps get into the 20s like if you don't have anything protecting it these vegetables are goners anyway yeah um but you know a few degrees could be a difference when it comes to the warmest place for me is going to be my in-ground beds the garden beds that are sitting on top of some soil the next uh second warmest place is going to be my garden beds that are sitting on the patio the concrete patio Um, this time of year, I should note. Um, And then the last thing, and this is going to be the ones that are most vulnerable, are going to be my containers. Um, Because that little, I mean, it's that material is fine for growing in, but uh, those things get cold pretty fast. It doesn't have all of that earth around it. It kind of uh, retain the heat, if you will. Um, So I don't intend on trying to frost protect everything. I'm not no, going to do you, my um, my um, summer veggies. Like you said, no. I'm not going to bother with those. Um, there are, and I'm not going to do all of my containers because I have some leafy greens that I'm going to be growing in containers. And I'm just, I'm going to call that what it is. Um, I am going to try to um, protect for as long as I can and at all costs any of the fall veggies that I'm growing in my raised beds. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm trying to be very intentional. And this is why, oh, goodness, you know, (laughs) the pressure of really having a proper planting plan. Um, If there's anything that you help me remain accountable for next year, it's that. Um, Mm -hmm. 
the would be what I plant in the beds because it all kind of falls into place. Like the lettuce, I'm not so worried about because that a lot of lettuce isn't really frost tolerant. It may get like a real chill, but a lot of that lettuce goes. Things like collards, things like kale, like those things, they can take cabbage, a, broccoli. Yeah, they, they take can a pretty take good a, cold. Yeah, exactly, a butt kicking. And so, but the problem is though, even though they'll make it, they won't continue to grow actively. Absolutely. So they kind absolutely. of go dormant mm-hmm. and that's what you don't want mm-hmm. because then all you're doing is saving something until so you've got to try and keep them warm yeah well there are two things i'm going to say ideally you want to try to keep them warm but there's also that whole balance of how much stuff you're rushing into your home if you're not protecting it how much are you rushing into your home you know what i'm saying if you're doing your final um you know harvest Right. So I'm going to have a a shit ton of uh, summer veggies that I'm going to be harvesting right at that frost. And then I'm going to have some of those leafy greens if I don't try to protect them. So some of it is a little bit of storage when it comes to the frost protecting. Um, That's why, in theory, even that two week period last year wasn't so bad. What made it bad last year was the vegetables hadn't even matured. So remember, I planted I started planting that stuff in October. Yeah. <laughs> so, You're way behind. Yeah. So, and that's, that's a very important point though, mm-hmm. is know the schedule that your plants are. I mean, you know, I think it's easier in the fall. So like in the spring, it's easy because everybody knows like, not everybody, but a lot of people know like, Hey, I have to get my lettuce in the ground. Mm-hmm. I can get it in the ground because it's the, one of the first things mm-hmm. to go, you know, that will grow. But in the fall, everybody wants to hold on as long as possible. Yeah. And everybody knows that I preach, like you got to be kind of ruthless, yeah. you know, like I just went out and ripped out four huge tomato plants. Yeah. But guess what? Out of one tomato plant that removed, I got seven heads of cabbage growing. Yeah. But you know, you know what's what hard mean? now though? It's the, um, when it comes to summer going into fall, it's that heat fluctuation. So mm-hmm. um, the I have it's very spinach difficult. that I planted direct sowed. I don't remember when. It had to have been at the beginning of August. And I also already see some plants are bolting, you know, flowering. Um, and so and they're not any kind of size whatsoever. Um, now, again, looking at the forecast across September, I think I'm in the clear. It's not going to get we're not going to get to 80 degrees in the next, you know, and looking at the 10 day forecast, it's possible that the end of September will heat back up, you know, but you just hope it's for a short enough period where it doesn't, you know, fast track any of your vegetables. But I say that to say a part of the holding for some people, it's not me. It's part of the holding out for some people is one, I still want to get more for my summer crops, but also two, is it too hot to plant? Um, the holding out for me is my need to have everything in order. This is the confession, have everything in order um, before I actually decide what I'm planting when. I did this exact same thing that I did in the spring. Remember, it's like, why did I wait so long? Oh, this is why I waited so long. This is yeah. where I get kind of, you know, neurotic around. I don't want to start planting here when I haven't figured out these other six spaces. So I figured yeah, out the I other mean, six spaces, but that's another story. Yeah, it's, I think, it's, okay, so we kind of covered row covers. <laughs> Right. Well, I'm just trying to think well, in my head. Well, no, like, no, it's kind of like, yeah, thanks for your garden confessions. No, Let's no. get back to the episode. <laughs> no, I'm just looking at the time and I'm like, all right, we haven't really covered a whole lot. So um, there's one thing that I've never tried and I've always wanted to try, Batavia, and this would work really well in your area. And that's, um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but that's when you put a... Uh, like get an old window mm-hmm. and put over <gasps> yeah, a bed. Cold yeah, cold frames. A cold frame. Yeah, thank you. I totally lost my train of thought on that. But yeah, so building a cold frame and that will actually prolong your growing mm-hmm. season mm-hmm. because that will substantially heat it up. And then a bit basically it's like one step away from a miniature greenhouse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you heat it, if you did that, it would heat up during the day plenty warm Mm -hmm. plenty warm and then if you put water in there as well then you're going to get that water nice and warm to help radiate during the day so and i harp on the water thing because it it, i'm telling you it works Mm -hmm. like i've seen it work so so for the record who do you believe has old windows in their garage 
I'm sure you do. I absolutely do. However, since it's not a ceiling fan, I struggle with the creation, the assembly, because it, it requires a little bit of, uh, you know, tool work here to get the sizing right. Because um, I didn't build my beds to the size of the windows. I got built the beds and then got the windows later. And so I've been trying to corner the proper handy guy that is connected to me to build that out for me. But this is like year three, I think, of my desire oh, well, to have cold frames. you got them just sitting in front of them. I can tell you how to do it. I'll tell you exactly what I would do. Okay. You ready? I mean, YouTube can tell me what to do as well, but this is Screw where... Screw YouTube. <laughs> this Screw is where YouTube. I basically draw the line like, eh, I'm not so sure I want to start cutting wood and all of that. You got to cut one piece of wood. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. So I would go out to my garden bed, mm-hmm. and if I had a window, I would just say, okay, here's my window. It's... I don't know what, two by three, Mm -hmm, whatever. mm -hmm. And I would take a piece of wood and I would cut it and then just dig it into the ground so it would block off where that window is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I would just plant underneath that window. You know what I mean? Like, no harm, no foul. You know what I mean? And then in the spring, I'd pull that piece of wood up and you're done. Yeah. So that's like a way to do it. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be. And I think. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think that you are guilty of this, too. I'm going to call you out right now, where it's like, it has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to be like, I want this cold frame set up so it's a cold frame. And in your area, it would not hurt to turn one of your beds into a ready-made cold frame, Mm -hmm. where all you had to do Mm -hmm. was take like a panel of windows or something like that and plug them in. But if you don't have windows laying around... You can definitely get them from like a Habitat from hum- for Humanity or somewhere like that. They always have windows and stuff like that. So, um, so just you know, to know, fairly cheap. I actually, um, my uncle was like, I don't know if he was rehabbing a, one of his buildings or he was working with someone else. But anywho, he was. Oh, he was someplace replacing windows, like installing some new windows. And in passing, he mentioned it to me and I'm like, can you please, would you please? Um, So would you please, you know, bring me the old ones? And so he totally did. And that's what's in my garage. And I don't need it to be perfect. So that's not my issue, but I need it to be um, well planned out. And so, so as an example, the plastic wasn't perfect and, but it wasn't that well planned out either. Right. Right. You know, and so it ended up being for not really like I didn't get anything from those vegetables that I was protecting last year. And I think what you did do, though. So I was thinking. So, guys, uh, it's been rough weather here, a lot of rain. I didn't sleep well. So I'm trying to conjure up the energy that I really need to push through here the rest of the day, including this episode. Um, But I think you just gave me the the injection that I need. So I was thinking about literally dedicating one of my beds to like, because, you know, I have 898 of them to like fall planting because part of the pressure I've been I've put on myself has been like where to plant fall vegetables, where to fit them in. Preach it, sister. Preach it. <laughs> but one of the best ideas that I think you've come up with is. You're damn right. First of all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be insulted be when one. i say the idea yeah but no to focus a singular bed on um the cold frame right yeah. so it takes this whole idea of i already have a bunch of free windows it takes the idea of oh i don't have the right size for these beds and it also removes now what i do have bad this is a batavia thing it's kind of like i'm gonna turn my entire garden into cold frames it's like girl no you don't need to do no, all of that you know you like, can't do that um, so i really 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 like that idea so much so where i may even try my hand at building um did i tell you about how i carry a measuring um a tape measure in mm-hmm. my purse yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that's again my imagination. That listen now, I'm one step off of having my own um, renovation garden renovation show. So many steps off of that. Crickets. But still. Crickets. Yeah. Crickets. <laughs> Anywho, uh, cold frames no, is another method it, to um, yeah. for frost protection. And there's multiple types of cold frames. So that is a cold frame that will 
kind of heat it. But then there's other cold friends where if you want something to go dormant, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you know, for your flowers and stuff like that. Yeah. And so like what a lot of people will do and like, um, all of our Alaska people listening, I'm, I hope you do this. Um, you know, if you have like a flower pot or something that it can get cold, but it can't take extreme mm-hmm, cold, mm-hmm. you put it in something and then you bury it in the snow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've and heard then, of this. You know, because mm-hmm. it goes dormant, it doesn't need anything, mm-hmm. and then as the snow melts, it'll water it and it'll get warmer and warmer and you know, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. So that is one method, but that is strictly for like you will not get anything from that yeah. method. Yeah. You are just prolonging it so it'll live until next year. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So the window method, though, the window amplifies the sunlight coming Mm -hmm. in, heats it. But then you still have to worry about overheating it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because what I've seen people do is on days where it's warmer and I don't know like what warmer is. I think that's kind of one of those things you kind of do by gut. So I can't advise on it. You end up uh, ventilating it, which could just be having a stick in the air to crack it, it you know yeah just crack it it's like leaving your window cracked you yeah. know just let a little bit of air in so the heat can escape mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i mean if you have any question about it like stick a thermometer in your window it's the same idea as your car in the summertime mm-hmm, exact mm-hmm. same idea same thing put a sunshade in it reflect the sun off of it boom it cools it off you know by 10 20 degrees or whatever mm-hmm. but this you can't do that because you need the sun coming in so that is definitely another method. And I'm going to, I want to go back and talk about those um, pop up greenhouse things because um, our people that are in like some parts of Texas and California and the low, in the higher numbered zones, mm-hmm. those are definitely good options for you when you just kind of dip down cool mm-hmm. constantly, but you don't really stay that way. Um, you can take one of those, and I've done this before, and I've put a space heater in there. Mm hmm. You fill it up with as much plants as you can yeah. because you don't want the space heater to heat everything, but the space heater has a thermostat Mm -hmm. and you put it in there and you you turn it on at night and you'll run it, you know, while it's still warm Mm -hmm. from the day Mm -hmm. and then it'll just kind of keep it a little bit warmer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's definitely, I mean, you you have to be careful, fire safe and all that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We, if you burn your house down because you follow this direction, we're not responsible. So, you know, be smart about that kind of stuff, but that is, you, you know, those things pop up very fast and you can warm them easily. You can keep them warmer, mm-hmm. but then they're in the same area where you have to watch out for overheating. Mm-hmm. And that's a really big thing because some of these vegetables that you're going to be trying to save generally, they don't like to get hot. Yeah. You know, well, they would rather be cool than mm-hmm. hot. Yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, one quick note on uh, for my container guys and gals, um, there's relocation, right? You know, so there's some things that, again, if you're in that Denver situation where the temperature is going to drop drastically and um, but it's not expected to be long term, you can move things into your garage. I actually may do that depending on um if we get a, a weather scare and depending on what stage some of my vegetables are. So like my salad greens, for example, instead of having to stress about it, you know, depending on when and where I may end up just taking some containers into the garage because they're easy enough for me to move. Um, but obviously again, you balance the idea of, like you said, when the garden's less active, maybe you're out there less. I don't want to leave them in my garage with very little light for days at a time. Right. You know, so so how about this? Pause. We have eight minutes until we go to the recipe, and I am going to tell you how to grow vegetables in your unheated garage. Isn't that a whole other episode that we have? I don't know. All right, we'll go for it. I can't remember. Either <laughs> there's going to be eight minutes worth don't. for you to tell me, or it's going to be eight minutes as a preview, and then we're going to go into the different episode. <laughs> <laughs> it will talk about it again. Yeah, yeah. But um, you, you build a wood frame. You know, mm-hmm. just a basic wood frame with a, you know, and then you build a door that goes on top, you hinge it, and then you wrap it with the window plastic that you put on your windows mm-hmm. to keep the heat in your house, mm-hmm. wrap it in that, mm-hmm. and then you cut a hole in the window plastic, you stick like a piece of pallet down there or something mm-hmm. like that, so everything is kind of raised off of it, and then you run a space heater in there, 
and then you mount grow lights in there because you know now you can get grow lights are so cheap you know yeah, five yeah. you know, ten bucks you can get a three foot grow light you put two grow lights in there and you're off to the races and i did that for years you're real and big I, on the space heaters um so well i mean I, so i am big on the space heaters but that's because you've got to heat it and they're they're i mean they're small they're low energy now they have like tip over cutoffs on them and stuff like that if you raise it so it's not if you put it on that um i put it on to the um pallet Mm -hmm. And then I also put it on like a little piece of like two by four, like a little block. So mm -hmm. it's even a little bit higher so no water can get under it. But the benefit of those is when they kick on, they push out air and they keep yeah. the air circulating. Yeah. So um, they're just a cheap option for heat because in a greenhouse, they run space heaters. They just happen to be butane. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So um, they run. I mean, a greenhouse, when they ever, they heat it, they actually heat it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. So one thing to note, though, um, we're talking and I think primarily you're talking about kind of in my zone and my attempts. Right. So we know over the course of winter, we talked about this and how I had freezing water bottles inside of my mm -hmm. car. Right. So there's the garage as a layer of cover from the outside temps. And then there's exactly. the car. And even inside of the car, things were freezing. So at some point in the winter, it gets that cold in my ba in my uh, garage. So I couldn't kind of leave things in without expecting them to be impacted by the freezing temps. But the question That's where is, the space heater comes in. Yeah, but before even the space heater, the question is, when does that point kick in? Like, is that December? Is that January? You know, so it's worth for, for me. I'm not sure if I'm ready to commit, and I know that you don't need me to, but ready to commit to that setup this year. But I do want to pay closer closer attention and maybe write it down. Well, what I would do, and I've done as this far as many a time. temperature goes in my garage. <clears throat> yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I would get a wireless thermometer. Mm -hmm. And I've done this, and this is how I actually ran it. I had a wireless thermometer that had three different sensors. Mm -hmm. One for inside, one for the garage, and then one for actually inside of the piece mm -hmm. of equipment, you know, and um, into the little house. And I would do, and I grew lettuce mm -hmm. all winter in Massachusetts, and it was in an unheated basement. Mm -hmm. There was like mm -hmm. no heat. I mean, you go down there, and it would be cold. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was no like th like furnace or anything down there to mm -hmm. heat it. And I was growing all winter long mm -hmm. in there. And, you know, we'd have days you know below zero, and we'd still be growing. Yeah. You know, and it didn't really. And the, the trick is though, is because that space is so small when you build it that that heater doesn't have to run that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have that much space. Like I could have gotten away with a much smaller heater than I had. And so it would kick on and I would sit down there at night and listen to it, how much it kick on. And mm -hmm. it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I would also run the lights at night too, because the lights let off heat. Yeah. So in the coldest part of the day, I would run the lights and then that would help with everything mm -hmm, too. So mm -hmm. You know, there's all kinds of things. Like if you have a window in your garage, you can put it underneath the window where the sun hits it. Mm -hmm. That'll help warm it, you know, keep it warmer. There's all kinds of things you can do, but these are only for certain kinds of vegetables. Like yeah. you're not going to go in there and be like, I'm going to grow <laughs> me a squash. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's literally like pick the coldest hearty vegetable you can get and that's what you're going to be able to grow yeah. with that yep yep and also so. taking consideration the size of those vegetables and the size of your space like right. the size that you want to let those vegetables get to if you're talking about leafy anything we know and we we've joked about the idea of baby lettuce baby you know spinach baby kale like so it doesn't have doesn't mean that these vegetables have to get to like their largest size either right you know so yeah so i actually have some ideas I mean, that we'll talk about when it comes to the grill room um around that so yeah yeah there's i got all kinds of because i mean i've i you know when i really got into gardening i was living up there and mm -hmm. i had to constantly try to come up with stuff yeah. but you know f just doing row covers was never really in my wheelhouse i never was overly interested in doing row covers and i'm still not but i kind of feel like based on some of the research i've done and my growing area that I might be able to significantly extend it to a point to where it might actually be worth it. Mm -hmm. But you know, my experience has been with you. It's like a couple of weeks and it's like, who cares about a couple of weeks? Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm looking for an extra month yeah. or two. Yeah, if I can't is, get an extra month out, then I'm, I'm good. Yeah. It's my intention 
to grow food in the winter, yeah. right? You know, harvest food in the winter. And so that's where the, the, um, the windows came in. Um, and so I just haven't pulled the trigger when it comes to the, the cold frames. Um, yeah. but I am again, for the record, very excited when I consider a cold frame in bed number 928. <laughs> 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all, it's important to think about all that stuff and then just, you know, be realistic, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think, is the important thing. You know, be realistic about what you can do and what you want to do. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I know people, and it's very common for a newer gardener to be like, well, I want to grow this bell pepper all mm-hmm, year round. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, man, you, you just, you know, you can, but it's going to be so difficult. Yeah. Like, it might not even be worth it. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. if you're like... There's two ways to look at it. Either you expect to get like a full blown like harvest like you were in the summertime, then maybe that's not going to work. But if you just want like, you know what, I'm going to test it this year and see how it goes. You have the structure made however you need and then you can go down from there Mm -hmm. and then you can figure out, okay, well, that's not going to work. Well, let me try this. Let me try that, Mm -hmm. you know, and being able to just get a jump on your spring, especially in your area, I think is way more important than trying to prolong your season you know i think getting things in the ground earlier is so much more important and setting that stuff up now before the sun the snow comes and everything you know it's like i just posted on um the backyard gardens pod um instagram somebody had built beds in their garden Mm -hmm. now for next year Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep they're like completely planning ahead. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not even going to plant in them right now. Yeah. I did so. that with two of the beds, the circular beds, the fire pits last year. It was mm-hmm. like in November, October or November though. Like when I was putting the garden to bed, I went ahead and built them out because I knew that, you know, I wouldn't want to do that in the spring. Now again, you know, I misfired when it came to sp- spring planting, but the intention was there. Um, I really do believe that kind of the, what I'm doing now to air quote, protect my garden against, you know, the frost. I feel like I'll get the most out of it again with the idea of what those, those plants that are still in the ground. So that's that overwintering we're talking about in the spring. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, I think that there, for me, I kind of feel like I need to get at least two things out of it, whatever those two things are, not two vegetables, but two purposes out of it. Um, So hold that thought holding it's time for the recipe of the day this episode is proudly brought to you by san diego seed company a company that is dedicated to providing organic heirloom varieties of seeds for your small urban farm that's right you heard me you are a small urban farmer you provide food for your family and share with your neighbors and they are dedicated to providing you with the best seeds for a bountiful harvest check them out at san diego seed company.com or on social media at You guessed it, San Diego Seed Company. All right. So it's beginning to be fall, right? And we have all kinds of new fruits coming out. What? So your favorite fruits might be apples, pears, um, we are starting probably to get oranges, correct? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, I'm going to give you an overnight oats recipe for uh, using fruit. Okay. I, are you a fan of overnight oats? I am. First I'm of all? A, I don't eat them as often as I want because just like I can't remember to eat my dessert, I can't remember to yeah. prepare, prepare the oats, but I am a fan. Yeah. Okay. So um, when you eat apples, what's your favorite way to eat apples? Um, my favorite, meaning my favorite is to pan fry them a bit and some Mm -hmm. butter with a little bit of cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. The recipe's already given up. (laughs) So that's, so that is actually what we're going to do today is you take the apples and you dice them Mm -hmm. and, and you can use pears if you want. It doesn't matter, but I like to throw in blueberries as well Mm -hmm. and I put them in a pan. 
And I actually don't use butter, even though it will add more flavor. It cuts the fat down in it. Mm -hmm. And um, you just cook them down. And then you add in cinnamon, vanilla, Mm -hmm. and a little pinch of ginger. And so, like, I'm allergic to nutmeg. Mm -hmm. If I eat any nutmeg, I get an instant migraine. Well, to get that pumpkin spice flavor, you don't need pumpkin spice. You can just use ginger Mm because we do it Mm -hmm. all the time with um, pumpkin pies and stuff like that. But you're just going to cook it down like that and you're going to let it brown mm-hmm. and really and then you can sprinkle in a little bit of brown sugar on top to, if you really wanted to make it a little bit sweeter mm-hmm. and then you just you got to let it cool though but you want to you know it's done when the apples are brown but also the blueberries have kind of spilled their juice yeah okay and then you can you'll get like I don't want to say a soupy consistency but you know it can be pretty pr- Um, there can be a little bit of juice in there and that's what you want. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you mix your oats and everything and you put that in there and you, you don't want to stir it a lot. You just want to swirl it around Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for that visual appeal. (laughs) I've never had overnight oats with cooked veggies. Yeah. Or cooked veggies. That's not veggies. It's fruits. Cause I don't give, I don't give veggie recipes until I run completely out. Well, yeah, I was (laughs) saying like, remember I sent you the note, like, all right, this is going to be the fall. We're going to be in the fall. I was letting you off the hook. Like I thought this fruit thing was the summer. No, Okay. no, I'm going to, I'm going to give fruit love. All right. Okay. So yeah, you just swirl it, Mm -hmm. make your oatmeal with milk. Mm -hmm. Um, almond milk is what I use. And then you put a little bit more vanilla in it Mm -hmm. when you're done. And if you really feel fancy, you could take some like peanut butter and mm-hmm. you could heat up a little bit of peanut butter and then swirl that into just a little bit to give it a little bit of punch. Yeah. Um, up to you. But the next thing is super important. It's like a small pinch of salt. OK. OK. You want to put a small pinch of salt in there and you just mix up the oatmeal, raw oats, put it in the fridge overnight and then you pull it out. You'll get like a pudding mm-hmm, type deal. Mm-hmm. And you're eating so, it cold in the morning too, right? Yeah. 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 You're not going to okay. heat it up. You're okay. going to eat it cold. That's why you eat it now uh-huh. because you still might have a warm day or something like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, you Nicely know, and done. I prefer, I prefer my oatmeal not cooked. Even if I don't do overnight oats, I just put milk in it and eat it like mm-hmm. cereal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I probably would add maybe a, a couple of pecans or maybe a couple of walnuts. Uh, or yeah, even pecans maybe some, are good. I, I like to do slivered almonds if I add it to cereal like that. Yeah, if I was going to do anything in there, I'd put pecans for sure. Mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. pecans. Mm, if either. you're one yeah, of those. Or both. But <laughs> yeah, I'll put those in there. And, um, you know, a candy pecans are good too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Candied pecans. Mm-hmm. And so that's the that's the thing. I really like oatmeal a lot because you can get kind of crazy with it. You yeah, know, you can start yeah. switching stuff well, up. Well, clearly and... you do. I don't know. I'm kind of the plain Jane of oatmeal, it seems. Nah, man. Nah, <laughs> you got to go deep on oatmeal. So that's a, uh, that's a good, good fall inspired recipe. Yeah. So don't put clove in it or nutmeg because I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, if you want to, you're more than welcome to, but you know, so apples, blueberries, vanilla, salt maybe some peanut butter or pecans mm-hmm. oats and you know in 10 minutes you can make a whole breakfast for an entire family yeah that's um i'm gonna try it do I'm it check the temperature. Oh, ginger. i'm gonna check the temperature and as soon as it gets closer to 50 degrees for a high that's the recipe i'm going with yeah you should and grow fruit trees i should go what you should grow an apple tree uh no i was talking to my neighbor um two days ago and I have, I'll have to get the name of it. She mentioned that a friend asked for her address. They were talking about some fruit, some exotic fruit and they asked for her address and they actually sent her the tree. She thought that was, she, they, they were going to send her the fruit, but they actually sent the tree itself. And so they're trying to figure out how to plant it. But we talked about how you um, dig a hole and stick it in the ground. Well, no, she doesn't want to, the, um, it's a mother and daughter. The mother doesn't want to dig holes anywhere, but we talked about if I had more space, I would absolutely do, um, trees. I've seen people in Chicago do peach trees mm-hmm. successfully. Um, but I would have to give up, you know, basically my front yard garden to do any sizable trees. And I'm not ready for that. Um, well, see, 
that's not true though because by the time the tree you just your garden would change as a tree gets bigger and bigger mm-hmm. that's a yeah, good so point. it's not like you drop in the tree and you're like all right tree, garden's yeah. gone yeah yeah you yeah, know right. that tree's gonna take three or four years before mm-hmm. it even starts to get any size to it so very good point yeah i wouldn't stress out about that but oh i'm not know. stressed out about it it's not a part of the plan but what you're no. telling me is it could be it could be anything mm-hmm. is in your future mm-hmm the future Anything. is unlimited. The sky's the yeah. limit. The sky <laughs> is literally the limit, except for the temperatures. That helps. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that does. That's actually a pretty important part. <laughs> yeah, we used to go out and pick apples every year. We'd get like four or five bushels in the fall, mm-hmm. and that would last us through the winter. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we'd make applesauce and apple butter and everything. Yeah. But we had to get pretty creative with how we ate apples uh-huh, after uh-huh. a while, you know. So jelly was always like, we always had a lot of apple jelly yeah. and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So that was real good. Yeah. Okay. But so anyways. So are you frost protecting? Did we land on you're going to do some frost protecting this year um, or you're going to prep for it for I'm gonna, next year? I'm going to prep for it for next mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not actually going to do anything. And now as, as we sit here and talk about, it, I'm like, you know what, maybe I'll get one of those little pop-up greenhouses mm-hmm. and put my money where my mouth is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because before I only, I only had raised beds yeah, okay. and they didn't really fit. So I didn't really want to use it. But now I'm, I'm like, I don't have, I have like an in-ground bed now. So I do have the ability to do it. So maybe I will, but I've got to do like a soil test and mm-hmm. I've got to get mm-hmm. all kinds of, mm-hmm. you know, I've got to, I've got major soil issues in some parts of it. Yeah. So I really need to kind of get on top of that. So I got to really think hard about it, but I may actually do it. And if for nothing else, it'll be just to get a jump start on the season because I can technically start planting some stuff in January here. Mm-hmm. But you keep on saying, <laughs> I keep on saying, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not convinced yet. Mm-hmm. I'm not convinced, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, m- the bulk of my gardening had been in Massachusetts for many years. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was used to doing things a little different and I knew down here, you know, it's, and it's like, we've talked before, like in our zones, like we're so close to each other in our frost dates, but our weather is completely yep. different. Yep. You know, you're clearly like, we're only like what, 15 days apart, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you're clearly on that path. And if you walked outside here, you'd be like, really? <laughs> you're not, there's no way. So it's just kind of, you know, I'm not sold on doing it yet. And part of it is because I just, I like to take a little break from my garden. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'd like to take a time where I don't even have to go out there and I can just plan it, you know, yeah, not have the issues that I've had this year. I think one of our earlier September episodes, you were asking me, one of the earlier episodes that's going to air in September, you were asking if I had reached the point of being garden tired, or at least that's my version of what you asked. Yeah. And at that point, like in that moment, and probably the next handful of days, I had not. Um, but I promise, like, the okra is killing me. Like, it's mm-hmm. <laughs> me like um but all in all yeah i am i have gotten to the point of where i've gotten kind of garden tired um and i think again a a big part of it was i had to mix in the planning still with it and so right it's not like obviously we're not it's not a physical tired you know but my mind is tired you know moving things around in my head and you know on my phone not in my notebook though um so it's my hope that next year's garden will be a little bit more planful um which will ease up on kind of that garden tire but it's natural you know again it's not something i've ever done all year long you know there are defined periods of time and it's no different like this is the time of year where i have to be very conscious about um kind of what i leave outside you know kind of the mess that i made i had pounds and pounds and pounds, like buckets and buckets of potting soil just sitting on my back porch area for like a week you know and so yeah. a good rain comes in and it's like mud you know so i had to be very conscious of let me make sure i start cleaning up as i go which i normally do in the height of the season um because otherwise it's just going to be a mess and i'm going to avoid coming back here and then next yeah. spring it's going to be just the biggest pain so anywho yeah, I mean, that's, I think everybody gets garden tired mm-hmm. to an extent, you know, and, and gets a little burnout because it is a lot of work, man. Yeah. And, 
you know, especially when it's like, okay, now I'm going to transition to a fall garden. Mm-hmm. Then it's like you're back and doing what you were doing in spring yeah, when it was nice yeah. and comfortable, but it's hot yeah. and you get tired, you know, and I've had ups and downs this year with the garden and we've, you know, I've had issues and I've had wins and losses mm-hmm. and fails and just all kinds of things, I mean, devastation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's that stuff wears on you. Yeah. And you get emotionally attached to your garden, too. And, you know, I think there comes a point, you know, if you live in a climate in which your garden will go to sleep, I think you get to a point where it's like, OK, I'm just going to let it go. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can either let it go. Or you can do like I am and you're just like, no, I want to keep it going, you know, because for me, it's like, you know, it's like the other day I walked outside and one of my pepper plants just died, Mm -hmm. just like shriveled up and died all of a sudden, had no sign of being sick or anything. So I'm looking at it. I'm like, well, what the hell's going on with this? You know, so I pulled it up. I still have three months left at that time. Yeah. 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 You got to put something in its place. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you had three months of like, yes, something will grow here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It wasn't like an option. It was like, yes, I can physically, I know for a fact, I can't leave that space blank. But if it goes on and on and on and we get a couple of weeks in and you're like, yeah, I got like a month, month and a half left. And you're like, well, you know, I could get a radish, but like, <laughs> well, I'm not really into radishes. Yeah. So. I actually need to look at our schedule because I'm just going to give this as a teaser. I think a part of what you're growing really feeds into garden fatigue or how much garden fatigue you have. So um, I know that you and I have very different styles when it comes to what we decide, how we decide what we're putting into our garden. You know, so the one things that are more novelty, your patience is, you know, it wears when it comes to the things that are like frou-frou, right? Versus the, the, right. the things that you really enjoy. Um, and so we've talked again and again about the size of my garden. So remember, this is the second year that I've had this much space, right? You know, and so I've, I'm really excited about kind of refining things um, where it's like, I love that I have this okra because it's only gonna be like two plants next year that's it that's all two plants or maybe more than two but um but yeah i think that part of what you're growing also um folds into how excited you still are about the garden how how much you may want to um protect things against the frost how much you may Mm -hmm. want to say ah you know we'll get at it again next year so all of Mm -hmm. that kind of folds into it yeah there's all kinds of options and it's just, it's that time of year, man. You know, it's that time of year where it's like either you're burnout and you don't want to do it anymore or you're gung ho and you just want to get as much as you can out of it. And, you know, when you start talking about frost protection, if you haven't prepared up to that point, it can be a lot to ask yourself to do mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. when you know that the season's coming to an end. It's like, yeah. okay, my God, I'm going I'm to build something. Yeah. yeah. And it's not overly hard to build like you know the biggest one we gave was like a row cover Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know it's not overly difficult to build it but you know one reason why i never did a row cover and i'm be straight up is just because i didn't want it to look like crap you know what i mean and it's like the winds come as the seasons change it's not like in the summer you know generally in the summer the winds are nice and calm you know and but when the seasons change you get that cooler weather Mm -hmm. then you start getting storms and you get all this other stuff It, it can be a real pain in the ass to go out there right now Mm -hmm. and build something. And that's why I'm actually a big proponent of trying the pop-up greenhouses, even though I don't like them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a good point. It's It's less work involved now. So again, installed a ceiling fan. I don't want to create or didn't want to create, uh, yeah, cold frames. However, I have done low tunnels like using the PVC pipe and it's not for me and my skill level. So think ceiling fan were the days of old. I've not installed a ceiling fan in 10 years and I have had two more installed since then. Um, the row cover piece of it, because the row cover technically is the material, right? Um, but right. the PVC piece, you know, if you're using that for material, that's probably one of the easier things that I've done. Probably 
I guess just as easy as building a raised bed, if you will. Um, now I did it last year. I actually have a video on YouTube where I did this last year and the hardest thing was filming it while I was trying to yeah. do it. Right. But I'm going to say I, I did this like towards the end. No, it had to be November because I'd already gotten at some point I had snow on my collard greens when I was building them. So it was yeah. like early November, but the key there. So I was again, um, I think I'd had one already built and I had that bed cover and the others that I was building is where, you know, I was adding them for now and then in the future. But anywho, the weather had cooled off. So like this comes out in October, the beginning of October. So this is going to be like your ideal time in many places because, you know, yeah. in August, again, you, you can work in your garden. We all are doing garden walks. We're out there harvesting and things. But if you want to try to get timing right where it's just not your sweat and buckets, you know, that sweet spot is probably a, a few weeks before your frost date. Right. Yeah. And, and don't try and go out there and, and cover your whole garden. No. You know, please don't do that the first time. Do a test. You mm -hmm. know, gardening is a long term game. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a quick. Yeah. You know, a, there's not a quick fix, you know, unless you have a small, I mean, you know, if you have a very small garden, which good for you, if you mm -hmm. do, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, then by all means, but you know, there's, you know, you could make a small bed. If you, uh, uh, let's do this. If you're going to make a small bed that you were going to cover, mm -hmm. what would you plan in it? What would be your choices? Uh, my small bed would be the four by four bed that I have. Um, and I would plant, um, spinach and kale period spinach and kale mm -hmm. two things i enjoy two things that are pretty hearty yeah i would do lettuce kale spinach um i would probably dabble in carrots mm -hmm. and cilantro yeah um carrots and cilantro are actually really good finds um I actually was thinking about doing some cilantro for the fall, but I think I've just run out of days when it comes to getting to a point of, um, you know, being mature before that cold sets in. So that's really, those right. are really good ads. I wouldn't, the only reason why I wouldn't do lettuce is, um, depending on the variety of lettuce, some le lettuce is still delicate, you know? So one of the quick notes that we have when it comes to, um, you know, that kind of cold, if you have these leaves that are frozen, don't try to harvest once they've frozen. Uh, once they're frozen, wait until they thaw. And that ice kind of shakes off before you try to go and pick those leaves. All Just right. a note. Yeah, and I mean, know what you're growing. Mm -hmm. Like, don't go out there blind mm -hmm. and and try and save everything. Mm -hmm. Like, know what you have the best chance. Like, don't set yourself up for failure based off your dreams. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I love watermelon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually, I, I got done surfing yesterday and I sat on the beach and I ate a piece of watermelon and I told my wife and I was like, I'd take a bite out of this right now. And it reminds me of everything good on this planet. Uh, yeah. It has water. Uh -huh. It's sweet. It's delicious. And it's beautiful. You know, and so that being said, like, I would love to grow watermelon year round, mm -hmm. but that's just not going to, it's mm -hmm. not going to happen. Yeah. It's, it's not going to do. And I can't stress that enough because I've had a lot of gardeners like message me or message the podcast on Instagram. They all want this stuff. And I'm like, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's not going to work. And most people that have greenhouses, they still don't even put that stuff in there. You know, they just have these greenhouses and they're starting seeds early. They're growing the appropriate vegetables mm -hmm. for their winter, mm -hmm. but they're not doing anything insane. You know, yeah. some people will have a tomato, like an early girl tomato mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Depends on how you can keep your greenhouse. And we haven't even really touched on like a proper greenhouse. No, no. Because I don't feel like that this is the episode for a proper greenhouse talk. I don't think so. And I also, um, I just want to touch back to, I'm going to say it was the very first episode that we did together. And you interviewed me way back when we talked about how you and your family basically eat seasonally. Mm -hmm. um, and there is something to be said. And it's We're too far into this episode to dig in here, but there's something to be said about our desire to have everything all the time um, and the appreciation that you have when you really realize this is the moment. So I had one of my last, um, one of the last of the mango 
uh, melons, the mango hybrid mm-hmm. melons, like the best thing ever. And I ate the very last of it. And I was that just. That didn't taste like mango, by the way. Yeah, no, it totally doesn't taste like mango. It's a whole lie. Um, but uh, so they were so good that I actually, I gave, I gave one to one neighbor and another to another neighbor. And the, uh, one of the neighbors called me, um, this is last week. And she's like, hey, you know, I'm like, how's it going? She's like, I'm just calling the bag. And I'm like, oh, what do you need? You know, because I got a lot of stuff that's harvestable in my garden. She's like, I was wondering if you had any more of those melons. And it's so funny because um, I did, but I had like two in the refrigerator and I had them only in the refrigerator because they had already started to crack. And you know how that mm-hmm. goes. Once a melon starts to crack, if you leave it out, you know, on the counter or whatever, you know, it's done. Yeah. I mean, insect Rama, right? Yeah. And so I was actually saying to myself, that's when you and I had talked briefly about secession planning for my melons, because I was getting enough of them, but enough for me to consume over the course of the summer, but they came too close together. So anyway, um, I gave her one of the melons that was in the refrigerator and just said, hey, I think it's fine. I haven't cut it yet. Um, it's just cracking it. It looks ugly, but based on my experience with these melons so far this year, it'll be fine when you open it up and said, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you open it. And it's already, cause you know, it can be overripe. It's already spoiled. Um, just toss it. Cause I would do the same thing. But anyway, I gave her a melon, um, uh, and she ended up giving me that. It was Friday night. She gave me Friday night's dinner. They, uh, had had like a fish fry. And so it was the sweetest mm-hmm. thing. Um, but when I ate the last of it, so remember I gave her one and then I had one left. And so I cut that one open and I really had that moment of like, I tr- actually started seeds for that same mango melon cause I saved seeds from it. And I started them last month to see if they germinated, which they have. Um, but I stopped and said, like, I basically experienced a moment of this is the last time I'm going to eat this until next year. This is not something that I find in the grocery stores. Never seen it before. Only saw it in a package, you know, at Lowe's or Home Depot or something. And I was content with that, you know? So there are plenty of things. I actually don't eat a lot of melon during the winter because it's not my expectation that they're going to be any good. Do you crave oranges in summertime? No, I don't. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You just get tired of mm-hmm. eating them, you yeah. know. But 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 in the winter time, when you get that first good orange, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how good is it? Yeah, you know? yeah. I, actually, I can taste it. <laughs> Shame yeah, on but you. Then as I'm you, still like a month and a half off of that first real good one. Yeah. <laughs> but then as you get through the winter, you're like, you, you know, it's just mm-hmm. like this is all I have, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So. So we, I'm going to mark down for us um, when it comes to types of veggies and when, because again, there's something more to the idea of you can continue to grow food under a lot of circumstances. It's not the same food all the time. Like you just walked us through probably three or four different ways to continue to grow something, right? right. You know, um, and if that's the itch you're trying to scratch, there it is. You know. Yeah. I mean, what we're basically to sum up the past hour and a half is we are just talking about prolonging, you know, we're extending your season. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. a never ending and in, infinite growing yeah. cycle unless you're in a different, you know, unless you're one of the lucky ones that lives in, you know, Florida, mm-hmm. Tennessee, blah, 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 blah. You know, not Tennessee, Florida, Texas, Cal, you know, some parts of California, mm-hmm. you know, the southern tier states. Yeah. You know, what we want to do is we just want you to be able to enjoy that produce longer. I want you, you know what? I want you to get a salad in, um, you know, a basic salad for Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's my goal. Yeah. You know, if I can do that, then I'm happy, you know. But see, like in my climate, like last year, I had broccoli. It sat out in my garden all winter mm-hmm. and did not move. And then spring came and I was able to harvest mm-hmm. all of it yeah. because it started growing. It stopped growing. So that's why when, as we were talking, I was like, you know what? I'm, maybe I'll get one of those. Cause if I put one of those things over it, I'll get broccoli. Yeah. To your point, a, a great example of, you know, kind of a garden goes for the fall, a salad for Thanksgiving. Um, I, I'm trying to think it's probably been, it probably will be about four to six weeks that I've not had a traditional salad because Mm -hmm. of when my lettuce bolted and then when I basically will get lettuce off of my fall leaves. And obviously I want to tighten that gap, you know, but because that gap is what it is, because I'm one, I really enjoy salads, like your traditional lettuce, you know, tomato, you know, cucumber or some other crunchy thing. Um, 
I want to be able to prolong that, you know? So, and when I mean a, a garden salad, a salad from my garden versus buying it. But right. in that six weeks, I've not bought lettuce. You know, I've not, I've just been satisfied with the idea of I'm eating other things and I'm not right. consuming salads. Um, so, I, I mean, there's something to that. We'll explore it a bit more on a future episode or episodes, plural. Yes, there will be multiple episodes about stuff like that. So, yeah, I hope. Um, well, first of all, what's the next episode, Batavia? Do you know oh, off the top of your head? Off the top of my head? Of course not. Hold on. Let me check the top of my head. Where is it? Oh, I'm not that it's, in the, it's in the thing. <gasps> it's in the... Oh, no. I thought, I thought it was a really, really good one that I'm excited about. Um, it's reflecting there... back on our summer garden. The next one is? Yeah. Oh, I paused no. I thought to myself, like, oh, I wonder if we should switch that order, man. I'm like... <laughs> I feel literally a chill in my bones and I'm like, well, wait, maybe that's a great thing. Maybe that's the reason why we ordered it that way. Cause we get one more chance to talk about summer. Yeah. It's a, uh, basically a confession. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's our uh, garden confessional yeah. episode. Our you annual know I love gardening. Those. Yeah. Oh wait, are you trying to imply that I should pull back my confessions in every week episodes? I don't care what you Is do. Is that what you were doing there? I just said no such thing. Okay, all right. Because that ain't happening. My name, is, my name is Bennett and I ain't in it, so. Well, listen, I just want to do one last thing. You're just looking for a reason to do it. Go ahead. It's not even a reason. I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> Can't start a tradition and then not honor it. <laughs> yeah. So we've we've given you guys a lot of tips about um, frost protection. Um, some useful, some not. You know, definitely take what we've said as, as advice. If you're going to use a space heater, be smart about it. Um, you know, I've done it for years and I haven't burnt my house down, but that doesn't mean you won't. Mm-hmm. So, you know, look for safety measures and don't buy any kind of cheap ch- um, knockoff stuff from China because mm-hmm. that stuff will kill you. Mm-hmm. And um, otherwise, everybody. Uh Oh, wait, hold on. If you Go all ahead. have tried and true you know, frost protection methods that we didn't mention. Hit us up on Backyard Gardens Pod on Instagram so we can share it with the people the next time we chat. Um, But I'd love to hear, because if you can find something that's easier than what we've outlined, that's, you know, tried and true, that's the most important part for me. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, man, I'm all about it. I want to hear it. Or use the hashtag BYG podcast. Mm -hmm. BYG means Backyard Gardens, in case you didn't know. And, um, yeah, I mean, definitely tried and true. You know, we try to talk about everything that we've done before Mm -hmm. because it always, it always helps, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To just have that experience. Yeah. Yeah, I can talk, I can talk all day long about stuff that's in theory, but Mm -hmm. when it comes down to it, that stuff might not even work. Yeah. So, um, and between the two of us, we've tried some really we've tried a, great things and then we try some really stupid things too so <laughs> yeah i've done some really poo poo things so but everybody stay cool be strong um don't cry i know that your first frost is either here some of you or is coming but it's okay it's gonna be okay your garden still loves you it's just time for it to go night night go read it a story <laughs> i'll be cry good. for you don't worry <laughs> Wear a mask, be safe, and until next time, see ya. Thank you for listening to us today. If you want to follow us on Instagram, you can find us at Backyard Gardens Pod, and we share gardening tips and clips from the show, and we would love to see your gardens and share them with everybody. So if you want to join us and you want to share your gardens, feel free to use the hashtag BYG podcast. And if you want to see us on video, you can find us on YouTube at Backyard Gardens, where we have the full show and clips and all the recipes broken down for you. And until next time, Learn to grow and grow for change, and we're going to call it a wrap. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in.